scrappiness, praise God, on today. But we've just been focused, praise God, on uh, preparing for the homegoing celebration for Lady Jeanette Scott. And of course, she was a, a woman of excellence, an anointed woman of God. And we're going to see that even more on tonight. And so often, praise God, um, we only really appreciate some uh, when they're going on to be with the Lord. But definitely, I appreciated my wife uh, throughout our marriage. We were married for 35 years, and she was a tremendous blessing to me and to my children and to the congregations that I pastor. I know for many of you, though she did not bear the title of Mother Scott because of age, but for many of you, she was truly a mother in Zion. She had a sensitivity and she had a grace about her and a gifting about her, a gift of compassion and a gift of serving. And couple those together, praise God, she was always able to be sensitive to the moments of the needs in God's people's lives. She was a tremendous help to me in pastoring the local congregations that I pastor because she was often the one that reminded me or got my attention. I was focused on the theology and upon the scriptures, but she would always bring people to my remembrance that I needed to go see, needed to call, needed to talk to, and praise God. And if I wasn't available, she was going to be there for them. Amen. She was sensitive to the moments in people's lives where they needed their first lady, where they needed a mother in Zion, and she would be there in those situations. Sometimes just an encouraging word, sometimes just a smile, sometimes just a word of encouragement. That's who she was. But I want you to realize that as your pastor, praise God, I don't want you to worry. I am well, and all is well. Uh, of course, I've gone through those moments as I will probably continue to go through those involuntary moments of grief where they just kind of burst out at some time, the, uh, the moments least expected. And just sitting here, praise God, gives me some relief from those moments because very often when someone asks me how I'm doing and things of that nature, that's when those moments are triggered. But one thing I found out, and this is something that God has, has um impregnated me with that there are secret things that belong to God and and Lady Jeanette and God had some secrets and some things I don't see I didn't see until after she passed away the signals that she was giving me praise God of her preparation and her desire even to go on and be with the Lord because of the tremendous fight that she was in and the tremendous battle that she saw up ahead she held on for my sake. She held on for the sake of the saints. She held on for those who were praying with her and praying for her. Praise God. But one of the challenges she faced on the day before she passed, uh, we were listening. I was listening, I thought. And, he, and, and, and of course, I didn't know certain things were going to be said. And I was listening to the physician who had come to the room, and he wasn't aware that she was awake. And uh, he began to talk about the tumor that was on her spine and how she would have to be cared for in days to come. And one of the things he said was, not knowing that she could hear him, he said that uh, whenever you get out of here, you probably won't be able to go back home. You'll probably have to go to some other facility so that she can be taken care of and she would need uh, even, he said, 24 hour care. He said, you won't be able to do that at home. He said the tumor on her spine has severed the nerves in her spine and because of that she will not walk again and of course when i got ready and 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 and, and, and he talked about perhaps you know the things that doctors say you don't want to continue suffering and things of that nature because he thought based on what he could see she would be in tremendous or was in tremendous pain and i said what do you mean about suffering he said you know, the pain that she's in. I said, she's not in any pain. He says, she has to be. I, I, she, she, he says, I said, you can ask her. And that's when he realized she was awake. So he walked over to the bed and he says, you are in pain, aren't you? She said, no. He said, you 
don't you want something for pain? She said, no, I don't want anything for pain. Uh, he said, if you were in pain, you would tell me, wouldn't you? And she said, yes. And I told him she would tell the truth. She would tell the truth. God blessed her. She wasn't in any pain. And after I preached the message on Sunday, I went over later to be with her, and I asked her how I did, as I always did. And she said, you did good. You did good. But later on that evening, praise God, her oxygen level began to fluctuate. And while I was holding her hand, in just a few moments of time, she took her last breath, and she went home to be with the Lord. But I want you to know that she was a great woman of faith. She was always interceding and praying for God's people. Even when she was in ICU, and I went there to talk to her, and, uh, and just so happened to mention uh, Sister Hope losing her grandchild. She said, she's been on my mind. I want to reach out to her. I want to talk to her. I've been praying for hope. She's been on my heart. And that's the way she was with God's people. She was praying for her children. She was praying for me. And she always put others first. And that is that gift of compassion and that gift of service. Now, how do we go through these moments? I talked to the Lord and I said, Lord, you said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And the Lord said to me, you all were confessing that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. No weapon formed against her prospered because she is where she is satisfied. She is satisfied. The Bible said with long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. She became satisfied, I believe, when she got the word that she would need a miracle to walk again. And based on what medical science could provide, she would never be able to walk again. I believe she was satisfied when she learned that someone would have to take care of her, perhaps for the rest of her life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe she was satisfied. I trust that you all can still, and you're able to see me, praise God. Deacon Hicks is working on something here in the building. <laughs> Praise God to make certain that we have the air condition working that we need. Praise God. But I believe she was satisfied. I believe she made it up in her mind that time. Praise God. And I said, baby, I'm holding on to you. And I want to get you healed. I just feel like if I had been in another place, praise God, at a higher level, perhaps even what we're going through would not have been we would have been going through and she looked at me and she said no no don't blame yourself i believe she was satisfied because she had a gift of service and when she saw a future in which she could not serve as she desired she was ready to go home and be with the lord and on saturday after that conversation or after the doctor she heard what he had said I really began to think, mm, if I could have kept that information from her, perhaps she would have held out longer and continued to push forward for the total healing. And we saw so many miracles accomplished in the last few weeks when she was almost in a comatose state and she couldn't even, she couldn't even talk, she couldn't swallow, she couldn't do anything. God moved and gave wisdom to, uh, and, I, and I have to say the doctor, he was a good guy. I believe he, he, he didn't mean for her to hear that or anything. He thought she was asleep, but he was fighting with us. And he came to me one day. He said, it just seemed like I don't have any more tools. But he was able to do the things with the help of God. And we were praying and interceding where, praise God, she was able to wake up. And then, praise God, after going through ICU, she was able to come off the ventilator, come off the dialysis machine, and she was able to talk to us again. And God bless, she was able to move to the floor and we were able to spend that last week together where I was able to spend every night there at the hospital with her. And I was yet trusting and praying and playing faith building messages and listening to the word and interceding on her behalf. And she would listen to them with me. But most of all, we just held hands with one another and prayed. 
And every morning we would get up before the, you know, the barrage of nurses and doctors and all those came in. We would pray and hold hands and intercede together. We would pray about our healing, but we would pray about other things too. We would pray about needs being met in the congregation and the service and things of that nature. Praise God. But that morning, after we had gotten that information, I had to come back and my son was off at the reserves and my other son works at night, so he's, he usually gets off around three and uh, he's usually asleep about early in the morning. And my daughter had not yet arrived, praise God, from Jackson. Uh, she was coming on that Sunday. And of course, uh, so I had to go back to the house to let out the dogs and do thing, uh, the dog and do things of that nature. And I asked her, because I didn't like her to be there by herself, I asked her if I could have someone come to sit with her, and she said no. I said, well, do you want me to put on uh, a video, a message, or something like that? She said no. I uh, said, so what about some music? You want some music? She said no. I said, you just want to be by yourself? She said yes. And she began to look up. And I said, well, you seem like you're in deep thought about something. I said, you got a lot to think about? And she said yes. Got a lot to think about. Got a lot to think about. And when I came back later that evening, one of the things that the doctors had asked her, if something were to happen, and of course, uh, he was of the belief that she would, you know, eventually be able to be transitioned to another facility. But he said, if something were to happen to her while she was there, would she want to be resuscitated? I said, well, I'll ask her. And I did. And she said, no. I would not want to be. I said, are you interested in going to a different facility? She said, no, I'm not interested in going to a different facility. So I said, oh, she's believing God for us to get on up out of here. I said, well, baby, I'm believing God for us to get on up out of here and for you to come on to the house. She said, yeah, I want to come home. I want to go home. I want to go home. One day I came into ICU and I was, the Lord had awakened me that morning and he had been ministering to me about ministering angels. And of course, when I went to see her, I said, the Lord has been dealing with me about ministering angels. He said, the Lord has been dealing with me about ministering angels too. I said, yeah, ministering angels, they're gonna be involved in this process of this miraculous healing. I just see it, God's gonna use these angels to help us. But I believe now that those angels were just sitting there waiting for her to make a decision to stay or to go on to be with the Lord. And she made that decision, I believe then, to go on and be with the Lord. It was just a blessing of the Lord that her, her brother had come uh, earlier, praise God. And uh, her mother had seen her on that Thursday and then her brother came from Texas on that Sunday. And when I got out of the church, uh, Sister Eunice called me and said, Johnny, her brother, they're there. And her mother was there. And she just enjoyed a time of Jim being there. Cousins had come to visit her. And, uh, and then when I came, I asked her how I did with my message. And she said, you did good. You did good. She had listened to the message in the service earlier that day. All things, and her daughter, uh, Joanna, had come on back from uh, on that Saturday, praise God, just to see her mother, praise God. And, and she had seen, praise God, her children that week. I believe she was just ready. When she looked at a future where she could not serve in her potential, she could not do all the things that she felt she would want to do, and that someone would have to take care of her. Anyone with a gift of compassion and a gift of serving, that would not be the future that they desired. And I believe she came to the place that she felt like I have fought a good fight, but now I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And I know that God is able. She had told me before she got into this place when we first got the diagnosis, I told you that Sunday. She said, I've always wanted to go before you, and I've asked the Lord for that. She told me, she said, I just keep seeing my death. And I said, no, just because you see something doesn't mean it has to happen. We're gonna believe God, we're gonna beat this thing. 
and she went along with me and I believe she was fighting until she got the information that word that she would not be able to walk again I thought about it today if I had only kept that information from her if I had only prevented her from hearing that but now in hindsight as I talk to the Lord about it I wonder if it would have been fair to keep that information from her and allow her to continue to fight I know God could have healed her even in her spine caused her to walk again but that too would have been another fight of faith there comes a time in the child's of God life that sometime we say I'm ready to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and to be with him is far better I know my wife loved us and she loved me and she loved all the saints of Tabernacle of Prayer in Lateran, but she loved the Lord and she wanted to serve God's people. Now let me share a word with you that I believe is going to take you through this situation. It's brought me through. It's from Isaiah 43, verses 2. Oh, that's verse 2. Let's start there. Hallelujah to God. Matter of fact, Praise God. Let's go to verse 2 and then the first part of verse 3. He says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. That's where we are now, congregation. The weapon formed against her didn't prosper, but we are at a loss. We prayed for her healing. Now I'm praying for your healing as well as my own. And for the healing of my children and her family and my family. For the Connellys for the Scots because she was a sister to my sisters and brothers and she was an auntie to all of my nieces and nephews she was a daughter to my father and my mother and when she went home she treated my mother like a mother and then praise God she was definitely a stalwart hallelujah and a person of great commitment to her family, the Connolly family, praying for the family, supporting the family, and anything the family wanted to do and to promote the family so that the family could be everything that she knew God wanted the family to be. She would be there. And as a congregation, when it came down to serving, sometimes people look at first ladies with the big hats on and things of that nature, as a high position but she saw it as a position of service and if somebody was going to pick up a broom and things had to be done she was going to pick up the broom she was going to mop the floor she was not going to sit and watch others work while she sat down because she had a gift of serving I was really touched by a post by Sister Brenda about how she was on her wedding day and Sister Scott went over to the other building to see is there anything I could do Sister so Scott was pregnant with Joanna at the time. And of course, it had began to rain and Brenda was coming from one of the other buildings to the front of the sanctuary on the day of her wedding day. And of course, it began to rain. Jeanette gave Brenda the umbrella and she picked up a train behind her. She said, let's go on over to the church. She was not concerned so much about herself, but she wanted Brenda to have her, her wedding day. And there's so many stories like that that the saints have told me, praise God, who Lady Jeanette was to them. She was always concerned about the mothers of the church and wanted to make certain that they feel love and we had gifts and things of that nature for each and every one of them. She would go out and purchase them and make certain that things were nice when it came to Mother's Day. And she wanted to make certain that this time around, though she couldn't be here, that it was taken care of. That's the first lady she was. A woman of intelligence, a woman of compassion, a tenacious woman who loved her family and supported her family, her children, her daughter, her sons. That's who Lady Jeanette was. But she's prayed for us and I'm praying for you as well. And we're gonna watch God change even more things we saw so many miracles we were certain we had that final miracle and I know praise God if she had decided that she wanted to stay a little longer 
I believe and I know that God would have worked that other miracle as well. But sometimes we're like the Apostle Paul. We're betwixt. And God gives us that right to make that decision. To say I have fought a good fight. I've done what you have called me to do. And I've finished my course. But Isaiah 43 and 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Latter rain, Tabernacle of Prayer, Connolly Family, Scott Family, Micah, Joanna, Moses. When you pass through the waters, God will be with you. He says, through the rivers, they will not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And that's where we are. The waters have seemed to come up. But God says, is not going to overflow you. The fire is not going to burn you. The candle, the flame will not, will, will not kindle, neither the flame kindle upon you. Let me read it. You may not have this version, but I want to read it from the New Century Version. It says, when thou pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross rivers, you will not drown. We're crossing a river. This is a new stage in our church tabernacle of prayer because Lady Jeanette has been the only first lady pastor's wife that you have ever known as a pastor's wife at tabernacle of prayer. Members of Latter Rain, we've been there, praise God, quite some time. I believe a little over 20 years we've been there. And of course, for most, or for many, I should say, who are there, she's been their first lady, especially the children, most of their lives. So it's a new thing for us. But he says, when you cross the rivers, you will not drown. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Nor will the flame hurt you. This is because I, the Lord, am your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And that's who our God is. He is our God. He is our Savior. She is with him now, and he is still with us here. He is our strength like no other. He is our comforter. He is our king. He is our Savior. He is our strength. He is our peace. And one day, we've got to go on to be with the Lord. And one of the things that Jeanette's transition should remind all of us to do, make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of it. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate. Make the most of it. I remember my dad came to see me when I bought this house. And dad was the type of person who would see things years in advance, things that God would show him. But he was not, he was not a person who believed that he should prophesy. He believed that he should listen and pray and discern. And when he came to the new house that I had just bought, he sat down he looked at the house, nice big house, and he asked me the question, you didn't get her that house in the country? Why didn't you get her that house in the country? He came back later, told me I'd done a tremendous job on the house. And I told him we had plans to do that house in the country a little later on. Dad didn't say anything. As I look back in hindsight, I believe Dad discerned I needed to have gone ahead and gotten that house in the country. But I thought we had time. I want to encourage each of you, if you're at odds with someone else, at odds with a brother, a sister, a mother, a child, at odds with a cousin, at odds with another relative, an auntie and aunt, at odds with a person in your church, another believer, a pastor at odds with someone else. 
Jeanette was not the type of person who was just going to sever relationships. She wanted to reach out and heal a relationship. And when there was something that had taken place between her and someone else or a loved one, she would come back. She would say, I'm sorry. She would say she would do what she could to heal and mend that relationship. And this should teach us all we're expecting miracles. We're expecting another day. We're expecting new time. We're expecting more time. Let's not take tomorrow for granted. Let's take advantage of the time that we have together. Let's take advantage of that time. Because sometimes we think we have more time. And life happens. And that time has faded away. We should not say, we're going to go here. We're going to do this. And we're going to do the other thing. We should say, if the Lord wills, we will do this or we will do that. Because our life is a vapor and it can vanish away so, so quickly. Just in a few moments time, one little breath and my baby was gone to be with the Lord. She didn't struggle. She didn't strain. She just dropped her head and went to sleep. God is with you, saints. God is with us, saints. And I read this scripture in the prayer call on today. Thank God I'm doing a little better <laughs> in this time than I was in that prayer call today. But in 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 through 17, he says, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even the Father, which has loved us, encouraged us, May our Lord, oh, you switched to the new century. That's all right. I'll read that. That's a good one. He says, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father encourage you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. That's what I'm praying for you. God, my Father, encourage your people and strengthen us. Strengthen every saint of God in the days and the hours and the weeks that are to come. And help us to speak words that strengthen one another. That minister grace to the hearers and binds up our wounds. He goes on to say, God loved us. And through his grace, he gave us a good hope. And an encouragement that continues forever. My baby's going on to be with the Lord. My I call it my smack pack sugar pudding. Praise God. I had to trans, you know, transform the last part. I was says the woman of the hour too sweet to be sour with sugar in a soul like butter rose. Hallelujah to God. But she's not just the woman of the hour. She's the woman of all my hours. Praise God. And I thank God for her. But though she's going to be with the Lord, remember what the last part says. God loved us. And though we're going through this storm, it isn't because he loved us any less. But he walks with us through these challenging times. And through his grace, he gives us good hope. There's hope, saints. God has greater things and more things in store for Tabernacle of Prayer, for latter rain. We're moving forward. We're going higher. And God will be with us. He gave us good hope. And he's giving us encouragement. That's what I have felt over these last few days. And I thank God for the encouragement of the saints. I thank God for the texts and for the phone calls and for the notes that I've seen, praise God, on, uh, on Facebook. I thank God for my Uncle John and Aunt Mary coming down to, to pray with me, to be with me. I thank God for, praise God, uh, one of the general board members, praise God giving me a call to encourage me who went through a similar situation not very long ago, praying with me and encouraging me as we text back and forth. I thank God for the pastors and elders who have texted me and called me. Hallelujah. I thank God for my bishop, Bishop Preston and Mother Preston and I, how she wrote my wife a note to encourage her to keep on fighting. But most of all, what I've experienced in the last few days is the encouragement that continues from my Heavenly Father. 
Saints, what you see is what you get. I believe what I'm preaching. I know the Holy Ghost is real. And I know he's with me. And he has been with me. And I know, hallelujah to God, that supernaturally he gives us strength. He gives us peace. He gives us grace to go through whatever storm we're enduring. Peace in the midst of the storm. Yeshabahata. And when your emotions are turning and churning, the helper, the Holy Ghost rises up on the inside of us to give us a peace that passes all understanding, joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. And when tears are streaming down your eyes, the Holy Ghost is there. The Holy Ghost is there. He helps us to keep our calm. He helps us to keep our composure. And actually, I think many people in the natural world and the medical professional, they don't understand us as believers. When I was standing over the, 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 the body of my wife, one of the persons, the medical profession looked across and said, you're in denial. I said, I am not in denial. But they don't understand. We're not afraid of death, though we pray for healing. We understand death. We understand that it will happen to all of us at some point in time. The fact that we believe for healing doesn't mean we are in denial of sickness. It means we are serious about sickness and we want to defeat it and we want to pray against it. But why would you pray against something unless you know that it is real? We pray against sickness and disease because we know that it is a threat and it can sometimes take us out of here before our time. We're not denying reality when we believe God for miracles because we know we have a God who does work miracles. We simply look at the whole of reality when often the medical profession only looks at the largest percentage of reality. And I know in the percentages, most of the time, people with certain sicknesses and diseases succumb to it, but that is the percentage. If 90% of the people succumb to a certain disease that's only the reality for that 90 percent but the overall reality says 90 percent came to the disease disease and 10 percent survived it when we ask god for healing we're not just looking at the 90 percent we're looking at the 100 percent and we're looking at the fact that there are those that god will bring out and give a a tremendous testimony we don't deny reality. We know that there's more than one reality. We know that there's the physical and we know there's the spiritual. We know there's this side and we know there's the other side. We know there's the natural realm but we also know there's the power of the Holy Ghost to overcome and supersede the natural realm. We believe in miracles. That's not a denial of reality. That is a fact. Miracles have and do happen. But we also know that most of the time, miracles don't happen. That too is reality. That's why we call miracles, miracles. Because they are a break with the norm, with the natural realm of what happens most of the time. So we are God's people. We will continue to fight in faith. We will continue to stand in faith. We will continue to rack up more victories, one after the other, to give glory and honor and praise to our Father. And though the world may not understand us, we've got to be who we are in Jesus Christ. I had intended to play a message, and I trust, praise God, that you'll stay on long enough because we don't usually get out this early, praise God. But it won't be a long message. But I want to, I want you to listen to a message. As a matter of fact, I played this with Jeanette uh, the last week. Well, I say the last week of her life, praise God. But it was on that day that they called me back to the hospital and her oxygen began to drop. And I began to pray for her. And God was able to give her a few more days. He raised her oxygen back up and praise God. But that was before we got that other information about her being paralyzed the rest of her life. And she came on back and she listened to that message. And I want you to hear some excerpts from that message. Praise God. And perhaps just listen to the rest of it. Praise God. 
on this evening. It was the last message she ministered here at the Tabernacle of Prayer. And as you listen to this message, it's going to cause you to think again and really appreciate the tremendous woman of God that we had. Praise God. I don't know if we're going to play it all tonight, praise God, but you can find it on YouTube. You can share with others. But let me tell you, Jeanette, Andronette Connolly Scott was a tremendous woman of the word, a tremendous woman of prayer. And I have to say, she could preach. If you listen to this message, you're going to see what I'm saying. She didn't start out that way, but she boldly faced her challenges. And she overcame her fears, and she allowed God to use her. I want our media ministry to play that message now.
glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. My hallelujah belongs to you, God. Glory to your great and mighty name. Oh, God, I thank you and I praise you for this day. I thank you and I praise you for this time. Oh, God, I thank you and I praise you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your peace. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you for all the mothers on today, Lord. I pray that they will be blessed and encouraged. I pray, Father God, that you will bless us as we hear and receive your word. Oh, God, be glorified, be magnified in this place. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, amen. Glory to God. You may be seated. Glory to God. Good morning, everyone. I thank God for each and every one of you. I give glory and honor for, to God for all, for all he has done. All the glory, all the honor, all the praise belongs to our God. I thank God for all the mothers. Happy Mother's Day. I thank God for my mother being here on this morning. We celebrated her 75th birthday on last year, and that is a blessing. Thank God for all of our church mothers. I thank God for being a mother and for having all of my children here on this morning. That is a blessing. I thank God for my dear pastor husband. Thank God for all the saints at Latter Rain and Tabernacle of Prayer. Thank you for all your love and support for the ministry. Our theme for this month is always abounding. And we have heard messages from our pastor on abounding in love, abounding in blessings. And the Lord placed Psalms 34 and 1 on my heart to share on today. So we're going to abound in praise on this morning. A very familiar passage, Psalms 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Say it with me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Glory to God. We're living in perilous times. There's so much going on around us that is beyond our human ability to control or do anything about. There are racial tensions. There are parents facing challenges with their children. Many are experiencing health challenges, financial challenges, marital issues, issues on the job, issues in the classroom, pandemic issues, whatever challenge, trial, or test you're facing today, I want to encourage you to bless the Lord at all times. Let his praise continually be in your mouth. The enemy will attempt to persuade us that we're wasting our time pursuing to do what's right. That we're wasting our time pursuing peace. That we're wasting our time choosing to love. That we're wasting our time choosing to forgive. That we're wasting our time living for the Lord. That we're wasting our time living according to God's plan and purpose for our lives. But the devil is a lie. God will show up. God will deliver. God will set free. God will make a way. Due season comes. We will reap if we faint not. We shall reap. We shall reap if we faint not. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. And I believe all times means all times. How do we get there? How do we get to blessing the Lord at all times? I believe the answer is found in focusing our attention on God and his word and not our problems. Psalms 121 says, and I'm reading from the English Standard uh, Version, says, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We should seek the face of God. All of our help comes from God. We don't ignore the challenges or the issues along this journey of life. We are children of God. We are responsible. We do what we know to do. We are doers of the word and not hearers only. But there are times when we have to stand in faith and trust God. When we allow what we can't do, what we can't control, what we can't figure out to consume us, we open the door for the, to the enemy to steal our praise. Amen. Lamentations 3 verses 22 and 23 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great, great is thy faithfulness. Glory to God. God is faithful. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Hallelujah. He will never put more on us than we can bear. We have to choose to seek the face of God to help us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is our refuge. He is our strength. A very present help in trouble. We're given instructions in 1 Peter 5 and 7, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version, to cast all of our cares, all of your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Very carefully. We're given instructions in Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall, he shall, he shall direct our paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. This journey is a walk of faith and not by sight. When we focus our attention on the instruction, instructions God has given us in his word and walk in obedience to those instructions, it takes us to a place of peace that our understanding cannot comprehend. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know it was the peace of God that kept you. You know it was the peace of God that kept you. Tragedies are commonplace. Oh, so much is happening around us. My heart goes out to people who don't have the peace of God to keep them in these last and evil days. Oh, God, I thank you. I have a sound mind because of the peace of God. Glory to God. 
We're giving instructions in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and I'm reading from the New Living Transla Translation. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. It's all about being in Christ Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When we have God's peace, the peace that exceeds all understanding, peace that's not disturbed by what's going on around us. We can bless the Lord at all times. We can bless the Lord at all times. We can bless the Lord at all times. In the middle of that challenge, in the middle of that test, in the middle of whatever you're facing, we can bless the Lord at all times. Glory to God. We can declare Psalms 103 verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the, enemy, like, like the eagle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The enemy will distract us. Oh, yes, he will. He is the adversary. He is seeking whom he can devour. Glory to God. His mission is to steal, kill, and to destroy. But God's plan, God's plan, God's plan. Somebody say God's plan. God's plan is to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope in the future. Oh, God, I thank you for your plan. Oh, God, I thank you for your plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's word translation says, never forget all the good he has done. Never forget. God has been good to us. He forgives all of our sins. He heals all of our diseases. He redeems us from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies our mouth with good things. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Our focus and our attention have to be on God and his word. We're born again to win. The devil is defeated. No more will I be cheated. I am born again to win. Hallelujah. All the promises of God are yea and, a, yea and amen. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Hang on in there. Don't give up on God. Hebrews 10 and 23 says, let's hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. He's faithful that promise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Declare Psalms 1. Verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper shall prosper shall prosper shall prosper we have to declare romans 8 and 28 all things are working together for my good because i love the lord and i'm called according to his purpose we have to declare second corinthians 12 and 9 his grace his grace his grace is sufficient for me we have to declare philippians 4 and 19 i can do all things through christ who gives me the strength glory to god we have to declare isaiah 54 and 17 no weapon no weapon no weapon no weapon formed against me can prosper hallelujah 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 we have to declare that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life hallelujah i am more than a conqueror i have no reason to fear the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid oh glory to god 
I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, his praise, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will not be defeated. I will not be defeated by the circumstances of life. I will not be defeated by the circumstances of life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The things I see, they're temporal. They're all subject to change. I will not allow them to defeat me. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. God is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endured to all generations. Oh, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Declare what the word says. We have a promise in Isaiah 55 and 11 that his word will not it will not return into him void. It will not return. Amen. When we focus our attention on God's word, how much he loves us, his grace, his mercy, his loving kindness, his protection, his peace, his joy, his strength. Trust his word. Trust his word. Trust his word. Be a doer of the word. Walk in obedience to his word. In the midst of a pandemic. In the midst of a pandemic. We can bless the Lord. In the midst of all the turmoil and confusion in the United States of America. We can bless the Lord. In the midst of health challenges, in the midst of unanswered questions, in the midst of whatever is going on that you can't figure out, in the midst of it, choose to bless the Lord. Choose to bless the Lord. Choose to bless the Lord at all times and let his praise continually be in your mouth. I vow to praise him. I vow to praise him. I vow to praise him through the good and the bad. I vow to praise him whether I'm happy or sad. I vow to praise him in all that I go through. Because praise is what I do. <laughs> praise is what I do. 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 Oh God, I vow to praise you. 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 Hallelujah. Oh God, we vow to praise you through the good and the bad. We vow to praise you whether we're happy or sad. We vow to praise you in all that we go through. Praise is what we do. 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 Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And glory to God. In the face of the enemy. In the face of the enemy. Oh, I'll praise him. In the face of the enemy, I'll praise him. In the midst of the lies. In the midst of the confusion. In the midst of being talked about. Mistreated. Buke, squawk. Oh, I'll praise him. I'll praise him. I'll praise him. Oh, Oh, God, we praise you. Oh, God, we choose to praise you. We choose to magnify you. We choose, oh, God, to lift your name, to lift your name, to magnify your name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I will not allow the enemy to steal my praise. I will not. I will not. I will not. Oh, while we're trying to figure it out, God's already worked it out. He's already worked it out. He's already worked it out. Glory to God. Are you ready to bless him? Are you ready to declare, I will bless the Lord at all times? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I ask the praise team to help me with this song. And if you are ready to declare, 
join in with us and declare, I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. He's so good. He's real good each and every day of my life. I'll bless the Lord. I'll bless the Lord. I'll bless the Lord. I'll bless the Lord. He's good. Oh, he's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. He's good. So your Lord. Glory to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. He's good. So good. Real good. Each and every day of my life, I bless the Lord. He's Shanda. I will bless. Yeah, Yabahata. One more time, I will bless the Lord. Now, he's not just kind of good, but he's so good. So good. Yes, he is. So good. He Every day. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together and give him praise. Give him praise. And 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 Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. You know, due to the restrictions and social distancing, we're not calling people to the altar and laying hands on them with oil. But let me tell you something. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can get your healing right in your seat. Yes, Shabbatah. Because when we pray the prayer of faith, it's not the all that shall raise them up. It's not the preacher's hand that will raise them up. But the Bible says, if any is sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over them in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up. And you see, one thing about the Lord, 
where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And the Lord is that Spirit. But the Bible also said God inhabits the praises time, of Israel. God, yeah, hallelujah. I said God inhabits the what? God. And the praises of Israel. So whatever you need, if you need the touch of God on your body, you need the strength of God in your soul. If you begin to praise him, hallelujah, the pastor won't have to come to you. The celebration of life for Lady Jeanette Scott. Of course, she was born January 29, 1964, and passed away, praise God, uh, late Sunday night about 12 a.m. in the morning on Monday morning, May 16, 2022. The public viewing will be on Friday, May 20th at the Tabernacle of Prayer from 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. And that's at the Tabernacle of Prayer at 500 William Street here in the city of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And the celebration of life will be at the Medown Nance uh, Temple, the Medown Nance Jordan Temple. Uh, it has been renamed recently on Saturday the 21st at 11 a.m. And, of course, the burial will be at Highland Cemetery. If you're bringing or sending flowers, please send them uh, to the Tabernacle of Prayer between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. on this Friday, and they will be transported to the temple on Saturday morning. We're asking everyone, if you're sending flowers, send white lilies or a preferred white flower. Any other white flower would do it. Praise God. Hallelujah, to celebrate this woman of excellence. Praise God, and we trust that you will continue to keep me, uh, Pastor Scott, my children, uh, her mother, her sister, brothers, praise God, and the entire Connolly and Scott family in your prayers, as well as the, our spiritual family, the family of Tabernacle of Prayer. Latter Rain and the Mississippi Southern Second Jurisdiction. God bless you and thank you for joining us on tonight. God bless.